having set a red line on the further big use of chemical weapons, I think it would be wrong if America to was to step back and having set that red line to do nothing. I think that would send an appalling signal to President Assad and also to dictators elsewhere. As I say, the House of Commons decision, as I interpret it, is that there should be no British involvement in that military action, and I respect that. But the world does need to respond strongly, and I won't stop making that argument. But your government has tended to sound like it's blaming Ed Miliband. Your Prime Minister, you have a government majority, this was your judgment, it was on your timetable, do you not have to take some personal responsibility I, I, for the failure to do what you believe in more than anybody else? I take full and personal responsibility for the decision to recall Parliament, for the decision to take a strong and principled stand against the gassing of children in Syria, and I take full responsibility for putting forward uh, as generous a motion as I could to bring as many people with me as I could. And responsibility and for not getting a majority uh, course, even on your own of side? Of course I take responsibility for that, and uh, everyone who voted has to live with the way that they voted. So my it's not only, Ed Miliband's fault, no, My me. only regret uh, about what happened last week is that having produced a motion in Parliament that was clear about going to the UN, that was clear about listening to the weapons inspectors, that was clear about having another vote before military action, all things that the opposition asked for, that even in spite of that, in my view, they chose the easy and the political path, not the right and the difficult path. Did you get it right? I was right not only to recall Parliament, but right to listen to Parliament, and right to do it on the timetable that I did, because there was no way that I could have been certain Parliament would have had a say had I not recalled Parliament on that timetable. Do you now believe there is more evidence than you were able to bring before MPs, before the country when Parliament I, voted? I think the evidence is growing all the time, and we have just been looking at some samples taken from Damascus in the Porton Down Laboratory in Britain, which further shows the use of chemical weapons in that Damascus suburb. But I believe last Thursday, when I look at what the Joint Intelligence Committee, an independent uh, body, as it were, was advising ministers and parliament that they were certain a chemical weapons attack had took place. They believed it was highly likely it was the regime, and they couldn't conceive of scenarios where someone else was responsible. Now, I think we'll add to that evidence. Some pe for some people, there will never be enough evidence and for some in the debate in the House of Commons, it wasn't about evidence, it wasn't about chemical weapons, it was about how they felt let down over Iraq, and it was a deep concern, which I completely understand, of not wanting to get further involved in the difficulties in Syria. My view is we have to look at chemical weapons as something different, as something awful. Those pictures of children being gassed on our television screens are something the world must not turn away from.